Yo, what is going on everyone? My name is Nick, or The Notorious Fantasy, and in today's video, we're gonna be going in depth into my top five defenses to stream for week number eight of the 2022 fantasy football season. But before we can get a nice deep dive, a look into these defenses to be streaming for the week, I would like to ask that if you guys are new to the channel and you do end up enjoying today's video, that you please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. And while you're down there, whether you are new to the channel or not, please make sure that you do leave a like on today's video it would help me out a ton and if you do want to follow me on twitter please do so at notorious fntsy and if you guys have any questions about week number eight or maybe about tonight's game if you're watching this on monday the bears versus the patriots let me know down below in the comment section i love to talk to you guys down there also a quick note in week number eight there are two teams on by the kansas city chiefs and the la chargers so without further ado let's get into my week number eight defenses to stream we begin with the Indianapolis Colts defense going up against the Washington Commanders this week at home in Indianapolis. Now, currently, the Colts defense is owned in 34% of leagues on Yahoo Fantasy. So if you play on ESPN, CBS, NFL, any of those other fantasy football platforms, then the ownership percentage for all of these defenses is going to be slightly different. Though I will note, in some cases, there might be a drastic difference in ownership percentage depending on the website that you play on. So the Indianapolis Colts last week went up against the 10 Tennessee Titans in Tennessee. Their defense had two sacks, one fumble recovery, and 13 points allowed. Now, going into the season, I honestly thought the Indianapolis Colts had one of the best defenses in the whole National Football League. Now, through the first couple of games of the season, and at this point, we're like halfway into the season. It's week number eight this week, which is absolutely crazy. The defense did not live up to my expectations. But with that said, recently, they have definitely looked a little bit better. And this week, you don't need some world-beating fucking best defense in the National Football League to stop the Washington Commanders offense. Now, last week, despite the fact that the Packers ended up losing on Sunday to the Washington Commanders in Washington, the Packers defense had one sack, they had an interception, they scored a touchdown, and allowed 23 points. Now, I personally enjoy watching Taylor Heineke roughly a zillion times more than watching Carson Wentz. Taylor Heineke makes all these crazy plays. He tries to do all these crazy things. And while those could result in crazy touchdown, these highlight plays, a lot of the time it results in Taylor Heineke running around like a chicken with his head cut off and throwing these crazy interceptions. He does what I will describe as the fuck it, Terry McLaurin is out there move, where he cocks back and throws the ball directly into two defenders with Terry McLaurin kind of just intermingled in there with them. And then maybe once in a while, you get that crazy highlight play where McLaurin jumps up like DeAndre Hopkins when there was a million Bills defenders around him and he catches that ball because he's so talented. But there's also going to be times where Heineke throws that, it's underthrown, and boom, it's a pick six. So going up against this Colts defense, again, I don't think they're necessarily world beaters, but the Washington Commanders offense under Taylor Heineke is much more prone to mistakes than Carson Wentz than with Carson Wentz. And even with Carson Wentz, they were making a bunch of mistakes. So here, the Colts defense are my number one defense to be streaming in week number eight. Next up, we move to the Let That Dons, the Tennessee Titans going up against the Houston Texans in Houston this week. Currently, the Titans defense is owned in 41% of leagues on Yahoo Fantasy. Now, last week up against the Indianapolis Colts in Tennessee, the Titans defense really stood on their head and had a huge game. Three sacks, not one, but two interceptions, one fumble recovery, a touchdown, and 10 points allowed. And this week, they face one of the worst offenses in the NFL. So while the Indianapolis Colts are my number one defense to stream, if you wanted to make some argument with me that, oh, I like the Titans better, then I'm not going to have a big argument with you. I think both of these defenses are clearly number one and number two. They are clearly the two best, and there's definitely a fall off after these defenses. So the Titans, again, they played amazing against the Colts. Now the Raiders defense went up against the Houston Texans in week number seven on Sunday, and the Raiders defense has not looked very good at all, but the Houston Texans offense is so fucking dog shit that the Las Vegas Raiders defense looked really good. One sack, one interception, one touchdown, and 20 points 
allowed. Now that Houston Texans offense runs through Damian Pierce. And if the Tennessee Titans defense just somewhat controls Damian Pierce from going to pound town against their defense. So if Damian Pierce doesn't score three fucking touchdowns by himself and puts the team on his back, then the Tennessee Titans defense will have an extremely easy day up against the Texans. I don't think Davis Mills is necessarily the worst quarterback ever. I don't think he's going to be given any more chance to be the starting quarterback of the Texans after this year. That's just kind of how the cookie crumbles when you're not a first round draft pick in the NFL. You're not given all of that chance as a quarterback. But the Titans this week up against the Texans, we got another great matchup. At number three, we move to Jacksonville with the Jaguars going up against the Denver Broncos in London. Everyone can't wait for the fucking Denver Broncos in prime time again. And now you have to wake your happy ass up at 9.30 or 9.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to watch the Denver Broncos play football. Who in their right mind is going to wake up to watch that? Absolutely insane scheduling. Absolutely insane. 27% ownership for the Jacksonville Jaguars defense. Now, the Jaguars defense has definitely fallen off of a wall like fucking Humpty Dumpty. They've fallen off the edge of the earth. They have not looked as good recently. Up against the Giants, they got carved up a little bit by Danny Dimes. One sack and 23 points allowed for the Jaguars defense. But now they get the Denver Broncos. And even... If Russell Wilson comes back, I don't sense this being an incredibly high scoring game. Now, the Jets in week seven go to mile high in Denver and they're playing up against Rippon. Now, Rippon is probably worse than Russell Wilson. But at this point, is he much worse than Russell Wilson? Because Russell Wilson has been an absolute fucking embarrassment this season. The Seattle Seahawks look like they ran away. They robbed the Denver Broncos of all those picks, and they got to keep Geno Smith, who is just playing out of his mind. He has been playing unreal, and Russell Wilson has been playing like absolute horse manure. The Jets defense, again, in that game, one sack, one interception, and nine points allowed. I don't give a fuck if Mr. Unlimited Russell Wilson comes back. The Jackson Jacksonville Jaguars defense is going to run metaphorical train on the Denver Broncos offense. This game is in prime time. This game is in London. And all the London games go under. All the London games, and by go under, I mean go under on the point total. All the London games are fucking boring. They are never very interesting. Now, I know there was one earlier in the year with the Vikings versus the Saints that was relatively interesting, even though famous Jameis Winston was hurt and Realistically, that wasn't the best version of what that game could have been, but it was still interesting. I guess the Giants and Packers game was interesting, but it wasn't high scoring. So the Jaguars versus the Broncos, this game just reeks of being very boring. And personally, while I think this game is going to be boring, you might as well go watch some fucking paint dry. It's going to be kind of exciting to watch Nathaniel Hackett be an awful coach yet again and still somehow maintain his job before we move into defenses four and five for week number eight to stream on the week i would like to give you guys a quick word for our friends and our sponsor of today's video they've been on your screen this whole entire time bet mgm now today is the final day to use this deal after today this deal is over the deal ends tomorrow so if you are a brand new bet mgm user and you click the link in the video description or in the pinned comment down below and you bet ten dollars on any pre-game money line in the national hockey league tonight in the nhl you will win two hundred dollars in free bets if any team scores a goal tonight and guess what in the nhl the game can't end zero zero so someone is going to score a goal in the nhl tonight guaranteed and then you'll receive $200 in free bets. Now, you might not love the NHL, and that's okay, because with those $200 in free bets, you can bet on the NFL, the NBA, MLB, any sport, or maybe you do like the NHL, and you can continue to bet on the NHL. And again, you want to make sure you take advantage of this offer 
right now before tonight because this deal ends tomorrow and I want to make sure that you guys do get the free money from these sports books because again it is a lock to happen someone is going to score a goal tonight in the NHL again bet $10 of any pregame money line in the NHL and you'll win $200 of free bets if any team scores a goal tonight in the NHL which is guaranteed to happen again please make sure you click on the link in the video description down below or in the pinned comment to activate your offer so back on into things we move to defense number four which is the Cincinnati Bengals at the Cleveland Browns. Currently, the Bengals defense is owned in 45% of leagues. Now, going up against the Atlanta Falcons, the Bengals absolutely buttfucked them, right? The Bengals offense destroyed the Atlanta Falcons defense. It was unbelievable. Joe Burrow, Joe Shiesty, Joe Burrow, just like it wasn't even close. Like the game starts, Tyler Boyd scores like a 60-yard fucking touchdown. And then after that, you kind of knew everything was going downhill. The Atlanta Falcons were not going to be able to overcome this offensive firepower that was about to happen. And then the Falcons, for some reason, just decide to run the ball a million times instead of throwing the ball to, you know, the guys you invested heavy picks in like uh, Drake London or Kyle Pitts. Let's just keep running the ball, right? That makes sense, you fucking idiots. I cannot stand the head coach of the Atlanta Falcons. This guy is such a dumb motherfucker. I don't even know how he ties Arthur Smith. I don't know how he ties his shoes in the morning. This guy is a great A buffoon, but this video is not about the Atlanta Falcons and it's about the Cincinnati Bengals defense and these other defenses. So against the Atlanta Falcons, that defense had three sacks, 17 points allowed. Again, you can make the argument, Nick, it's the Atlanta Falcons offense. Okay. Sure, so the Bengals have a good game against the Falcons offense, but the Falcons offense isn't the hardest test, the toughest test for the Bengals. Now, the Ravens defense, which has not looked good all year long, and honestly, I thought the Ravens were about to blow yet another late-game lead up against the Browns, but they didn't. They ultimately survived that. They win the game. They have five sacks, two fumble recoveries, and 20 points allowed. Now, this Browns offense has been on a bit of a decline recently. To start off the year, I was kind of anti-Browns offense. I started thinking, oh, maybe this Browns offense isn't going to be very good until Deshaun Watson ends up coming back. Maybe Jacoby Brissett sucks because Jacoby Brissett, I'm a Dolphins fan. I watched him play for the Dolphins. The guy was Stevie Wonder in the pocket. He was terrible. He was awful. But this year, he kind of had a bit of a resurrection. He starts playing better, but recently, he's kind of started to stink it up. Now, I'm not saying that he's awful. He is definitely better than I would have ever imagined that he could be, so so I'm not trying to just dig this guy a grave or something. He's he's decent, okay? And now they have to play in a division rivalry, AFC North matchup against the, the Bengals. This is going to be a tough game for the Browns offense, in my opinion. I think this might end up being a lower scoring game unless the Bengals just take over and Cleveland fucking steamer the Browns. Again, the Ravens defense last week against the Browns, five sacks, two fumble recoveries, and 20 points allowed. I definitely like the Bengals defense this week. The Bengals defense to start off the year was definitely not very good. But recently, they've kind of caught fire. They've played a lot better. So I like the Bengals defense in this spot. Final defense to discuss in today's video, the Seattle Seahawks going up against the New football giants 3% owned for the Seattle Seahawks now the Seahawks defense typically is the bad part of their team right Geno Smith is cooking things up fucking five-star Bobby Flay fucking meals there he's playing amazing and then the defense kind of makes Geno fight back into these games right Geno plays good sometimes defense lets him down but last week against the Chargers in LA and the Chargers you know that should be a pretty good offense right Justin Herbert the pervert Three sacks, one interception, one fumble recovery, 21 points allowed. Now, Eckler went crazy in that game. Austin Eckler, man, oh, man, this guy looks like he really turned everything around after the first two weeks of the season, two, three weeks. But the Seahawks defense looked spry in that game. And the Giants are winning these games not because their offense is this fucking ferocious lion of a beast. They're winning because the defense plays good and because the offense just does enough not to fuck everything up. But we all know that Daniel Jones, his middle name is fuck everything up. I understand. Oh, Nick, he's played a little bit better this year. He has played better. I'll give him the credit. I'm not trying to shit on this guy. But what I'm saying is that I think if Seattle takes advantage of these bad mistakes that Daniel Jones could make, then they're going to have a fine time. The Jaguars defense has been on a bit of a downward spiral, like I talked about a little bit earlier when we talked about the Broncos. One sack, 23 points allowed up against the Giants last week. I just feel like, again, this is kind of a deep down the barrel, a deep cut of a defense because, again, they're only owned in 3% of leagues. It's not like 
They are this upper echelon defense in the NFL, but based upon the matchup, I think they get it done this week for your fantasy football team. Again, please make sure you guys do check out that BetMGM offer. It ends Tomorrow, the deal ends tomorrow, so make sure you check it out. Link in the video description. Bet $10 on any pregame money line in the NHL, and you'll win $200 in free bets if any team scores a goal tonight. Again, it is guaranteed that someone scores a goal tonight. The game cannot end, or the games cannot end zero to zero. So again, make sure you guys check that out. If you didn't end up enjoying, make sure you hit that like button as well as that subscribe button. It would help me out a ton. If you do want to follow me on Twitter, please do so at NotoriousFNTSY. And make sure if you have any comments about week number eight, or maybe a question about tonight's game, week number seven, the Bears versus the New England Patriots. Let me know down below in the comment section. I love you guys all so much. Hope you have a great rest of your guys' day. And as always, good boy!